Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to be reviewing Big Bang Theory Season 6 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this TV show really are. We did it! We're on the ground! We survived! That was just a parachute! We still have another six miles to go! <laughs> I don't blame them, because if you've never been in that experience, it... It's gotta suck. I mean, you're falling out of space at incredible speeds, and you are hoping the parachutes. That there's a lot of hope and like God-fearing men that get onto that thing. <laughs> Aside from Howard, the person sitting to his far right is a real astronaut. His name is Mike Massimino. He's done two space flights, uh, notably the STS-109 Columbia, where. They upgraded the Hubble Space Telescope with a new power unit, a new camera, and brand new solar arrays. They also set a record for space-time walk with 35 hours and 55 minutes in five spacewalks. It would be awesome if I could actually get that guy on the channel. I mean, you know, one can dream. There he is! Thank you! Great to be back on Earth! Uh, I think they're here for me, Ringo. <laughs> that sucks. This guy... Oh man, that sucks. This is one of those moments where like, you think someone's waving to you and you wave back, but they're actually waving the person behind you. I'm not sure how long after Howard got back to Earth that he is going on flights and just walking around like this. Generally speaking, it takes astronauts a couple of weeks, at least, to get back into the swing of things. I mean, there have been some astronauts that report saying they can feel the weight of their tongue in their mouth and it's sometimes hard to speak. The reason for that is because ever since you're, I mean, ever since you're in your mom's uterus, we're talking about way back in the day, then you are experiencing 9.8 meters per second squared of gravity 24 seven nonstop. And then you go from that to outer space and then you feel none of it. That is a crazy huge difference. It's also why when astronauts get back to Earth, they're actually all a couple inches taller. And the reason for that is because their spines decompress. The reason that happens is because gravity has been pulling that down and together your entire life. And then you go all the way upstairs as high as you can go. And then at that point, there's nothing literally holding you down. I mean, like no pun intended. And at that point, your spine starts to open up a little bit more and your joints start to get a little bit loose and you do get taller. Some things that astronauts do while they're on the ISS is that they have a treadmill up there and they have workout gear, they have weights, they have all sorts of things to keep them in shape and the reason you have to do that is because your body gets really weak when you are totally away from gravity. I mean imagine, for those of us who are true nerds, if you remember that one scene in uh, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, where uh, King Kai is training Goku and he's telling him that the gravity of the Saiyan's planet is like two or three times greater than that of Earth and he was like they're gonna feel like they're invincible on Earth but that's exactly what when the astronauts go to space it's like oh I went from all this gravity to nothing like you can jump like vertical jump like four feet in the air or something it's, it's like that's what they do on the moon all the time it's you're practically weightless the, the moon's a little bit different the moon has its own gravity but when you're on the ISS it's there's nothing holding you down no, no man, they think I am at home. Oh no, oh no, I'm a rocket man! <laughs> Perfect. That sucks. And yeah, that's... Oh, that's pretty horrible. Because also, the, the chances of you getting a disease while you're on the ISS are... Closer to zero than any other number because before you go up there, all the astronauts are verified and tested for everything. So that, man, that sucks. Like, you don't come back with a totally weak immune system, depending on how long you're up there. It's just, can you imagine going to space and then you get back and the first thing that happens is you get an Earth virus? The reason I specified Earth virus is because there are many, many strands of bacteria that we don't know about that are all over outer space. I mean, they've found water on asteroids, and it would be no surprise if there's living organisms in that water, microscopically, just as we have on Earth. And it's not a stretch to suggest that they could be harmful to humans. It's a prime number. Encryption systems are built on prime numbers. What kind of secret does Sheldon have to encrypt? He's always been very cagey about what he puts in his egg salad to make it so tasty. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm not even going to comment on the egg salad thing just now. Uh, but yes, uh, prime numbers are used in uh, cybersecurity and cryptography all the time. The, the, the reason for that being, it's you create secure cryptographic keys that are used for encryption and decryption of messages, information, whatever. The method of using encryption for cybersecurity is that you take the product of two large prime numbers that's used in an encryption key. The selected prime numbers are hidden, and the only person who knows those numbers are the ones who can decrypt the message. It is very, very fast for a computer to multiply two prime numbers to get a larger result, but to do the reverse, it, it takes quite a bit more than you would think. Like, uh, so for example, if, uh, uh, if to de-encrypt de a uh, folder, the answer was 16, right? Well, 16, not a prime number at all. It's going to be very, very difficult for the computer to decipher well, is 16 the result of 4 times 4? Or is it the result of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2? Or is it the result of negative 4 times negative 4? Or negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2? You see what I'm saying? So, it, it's it's easy to take the prime numbers and create a larger one, and the that's encrypting a message. And then decrypting the message would be, you take that larger number, and you break it down to a smaller components, and if you're using prime numbers, like 43, for example, which cannot be broken down, into any further numbers because it's only divisible by itself in one, then whatever you are encrypting is going to be more secure because how is a computer going to figure out 43 multiplied by what? Like it could, the number that it's multiplied by is usually another prime number. So it, like I'm not going to do anything on top of my head right now, but it's just to actually decrypt prime numbers is exceedingly difficult for computers to do, but to encrypt using prime numbers is very simple. How's the final stage of your nicotine addiction study going? <laughs> Just hold on, Marty's on the phone! Sorry, we've cut the monkeys down to one cigarette a day, so things are a little intense. Makes me miss my marijuana abusing flatworms. Those guys were mellow. Wait, okay. <laughs> I don't know. This is like, how, how they got the ethics committee to approve this? I, I want to read that paper because that, now I, I'm still amazed about how many things in the name of science are done just for the good as well as for the bad. I mean, the, the, the process of introducing and taking away and reintroducing psychedelics into academic research has just been an ongoing process since the, I believe, the 60s. And when it comes to addiction studies, I mean, why is she studying the addictive properties of nicotine? Don't don't we already know that it's addict? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's more to it. I, I don't know. As far as um, uh, getting monkeys to smoke cigarettes, uh, oh, it certainly have. I mean, we've launched monkeys into outer space. So yeah, like it, it, it's one of those darker areas of science that you can't experiment on humans, but they choose this. The mellowed out flatworms on weed. That that's pretty funny. I mean, I think that there are significantly less if any ethical ramifications with that just because it's a worm why they're getting these flatworms high off their mind and studying what happens to them is very interesting i mean i i don't know how transferable that that is to humans but the flatworm has a very very simple biology and that's why it's we're, it, we're better able to um i think it's amorphize or i don't know that word. i'm not a researcher or an engineer but basically if you can mimic the behavior in a particular animal, and because chimpanzees are so close to humans, if it affects a chimp a certain way, it's almost certainly going to affect us in a very, very similar manner. That's it for season six. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I wish you all the best rest of your day.